example for section 6.7. Let's go ahead and factor our denominator. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out the greatest common factor, which is x, and that leaves me with x squared minus 2x squared plus 1. No, that squared shouldn't be there. Maybe that's what my computer knew, and that's why it glitched. Okay. So then we have x times x minus 1 times x minus 1. Double check it. x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1x one and negative 1x add up to negative 2x in the middle. So another way of looking at this is we have two linear factors, and one of them is a repeated factor. So to write this one down, We are going to write it as a over x plus b over x minus 1 plus c over x minus 1 squared. So then when we multiply by our least common denominator, we're going to multiply by x over x minus 1 squared. So this goes away. And then x times x minus 1 squared, so the x's go away, and then x times x minus 1 times x minus 1 means the same thing as x minus 1 squared, but I wrote it out that way so that um, I can see that I'm just canceling one of those. And then this is times x times x minus 1 squared, which means this whole thing goes. Okay, so I am left with 3 equals a times x minus 1 squared plus b times x times x minus 1 plus c times x. All right. I'm going to go ahead and use my convenient x method. So I'm going to let x equal 0. So that would give me 3 equals a times 0 minus 1 squared plus b times 0 times negative 1 plus c times 0. So that gives me 3 equals 1a and then we have 0 and 0. So a equals 3. There's one answer done. Now I'm going to let x equal 1, so that would give me 3 equals a times 1 minus 1 squared plus b times x times 1 minus 1 plus c times 1. So 3 equals 0 times a plus 0 times b plus c. So 1c equals 3, so c also equals 3. Okay, now b is harder to find because 0 cancelled it out and 1 cancelled it out. So we can use an entirely different number along with plugging in the a and c that we just found to find that. Or we could group our terms together. There's many ways you can proceed from Okay, so at this point we have a couple of choices. Um, I would say let's go ahead and do the gathering up method. So that would be 3 equals, and then we would have a x squared minus 2 x times a. I don't like the order I wrote that in. And then this is a negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1 plus a. That's the only number that really matters right now. Um, what I just did was took the original problem, which was x squared minus 2x plus 1, and I distributed my a through that. Okay, and then I'm going to distribute the b, so that would be bx squared minus bx. And then um, I have cx. Oh, it's easy. 
then, I feel like I wish this was in a different color. I swear I tried changing it to red. I don't think it's stuck. Okay, change that to, I don't know, some other color. Red is fine. Alright, because we're kind of back to this step. We did these two things to find these numbers, right? So, we could just go, like, kind of just plug that in to begin with, but I'm going to throw it in right now. So, remember, A is 3. So, everywhere that there's an A, I'm going to put a 3. So, those are the three affected by that answer. Of course, C is also 3, so the Bs are going to stay as is. And then C, we can throw that in. Okay, so now we're going to gather up terms. So we'll have our x squared terms. Give me some space here. So x squared terms would be 0 on the left, because there's no x squared terms. And then I already put that A in there, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so 0 equals 3 is an x squared term, and bx squared is an x squared term, so that would be 0 equals 3 plus b. Well, that gave us the answer right there. b is negative 3. Let's make sure everything else agrees with that. So our x terms, we would have 0, because there's no x terms on the left. And then on the right, our x terms would be negative 6 and negative b and positive 3. So if we add those together, we would get 0 equals negative 3 minus b. Move the b to the other side, b would equal negative 3. So that agrees, right? And then if we go ahead and do our constants, of course, these last three parts, I don't need to keep doing this because I know the answer. So this is just to see that everything agrees. If you want to use this to help you check your work, if you have time. So I've got 3 as a constant. There's no other constants. And that's true, but there's no b involved in that. So that doesn't help me. It's true. It doesn't tell me what b is. Fortunately, I already know what b is. So the last thing we do is we write up our final answer. So we will have 3 over x plus negative 3 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1 squared. Ta-da!